Hey there, Alex here. The HTC U Ultra wasn't really that well received when it first came out, and for good reasons. Not that it was a bad phone, but because it was priced poorly. At the price that HTC was asking, people naturally had high expectations. Fast forward to 2018. I noticed last weekend that the phone was actually on sale for just under 400 Singapore dollars. For the pink version, it actually went down to 369 dollars. So let's take another look at HTC U Ultra and see if it's now worth buying. Let's just start with the design first. This is the first phone to feature HTC's new design language with a metal and glass construction. I thought it was good looking back then, and I still think that it's good looking now. Sure, the camera bump is a bit pronounced, but if you have the phone in the case, which they do provide in the box, it's not a big deal. This is a pretty big phone, and with pretty big bezels. This was before the whole bezel-less craze after all. But when you consider the price of the phone now, there isn't really anything worth complaining. In fact, it's quite the contrary. We are talking about a 5.7-inch Quad HD screen here. Yes, Quad HD. It has nice colours, and outdoor visibility is pretty good too. It's not the best display around, but it's definitely a really great display for its price. Then you get a secondary display at the top for various customizable shortcuts. They are pretty hard to reach on a phone this big, but it's still great for checking notifications. I love how I'm still able to glance at new notifications without being interrupted while playing games. Gaming is something that the U-Ultra actually does pretty well. It has the typical late 2016, early 2017 specifications, so it's able to handle most things that you throw at it. Not to mention, HTC's boom sound speakers are here too, so other than gaming, basically any multimeter consumption is going to be pretty good on this phone. With perhaps one exception. The battery life isn't that great. For such a big phone, it only has a 3000mAh battery, which is why you hear people saying that it seems like a really poor use of space. You would think that maybe the battery is smaller to include wireless charging. Nope, no wireless charging here. Anyway, the battery life is not exactly terrible, it's just not that fantastic. With a bit of effort and lighter usage, I was able to get it to last through the day. So let's talk a little about the software. It's HTC Sense UI and it's still on Android Nougat. Not a huge surprise that it sort of got neglected considering the reviews that it got. But HTC did say that Oreo will be coming to the U Ultra. Anyway, in terms of the look and feel, it hasn't really changed too much. It's the same design language HTC has been using for years. I'm not a fan of the look anymore, but it's not a deal breaker since you can just use a launcher anyway. It has some bloatware here and there, which is a little annoying, but nothing I would really say is a deal breaker. On the whole, it is still a decent software experience, and HTC Sense does have a few handy features inside. Then of course, we have to talk about the camera on the U Ultra. It has all the makings of a good camera, and for the most part, it makes decent use of its hardware. It captures pretty decent looking images in pretty much most lighting conditions, just that perhaps the image processing is a little bit heavy for my taste. Video recording looks pretty good too. The front camera is 16 megapixel with an ultra pixel mode that outputs a 4 megapixel image for better low light shots. It's decent, but again, the image processing is just a tad heavy for my taste. Overall, the camera experience here is not going to blow your mind, but for a brand new phone at this price, I don't think you can do better than this. I'll link more images in the video description below so you guys can check them out. In the end, it's really all about the pricing. If it's cheap enough, the shortcomings on any phone can easily be forgiven, and the U Ultra is definitely more than cheap enough now. So even the lack of water resistance or a headphone jack isn't really that big of a deal to me. The huge drop in price has given the U Ultra the redemption it needed. It went from a phone that I wouldn't really recommend to anyone, to one that I think is worth buying. It's cheaper than a lot of mid-range devices in the market, but still brings with it flagship level design and features. So if you're not looking to spend too much money on a new phone and don't mind a slightly older model, take a look at the U Ultra. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thanks, and see you guys on the next one.